Welcome to our service this morning on this Good Friday. A call to worship. Our Father and our God, we gather in your house today to begin this Easter. Let us walk on, knowing that love walks this lonely Easter road with us. Walk on. Walk on. With thanks to Craig Mitchell and our support for Hugh as he leads us in this service. Be still, my soul, the Lord is on your side. The passion, the, the cross of greed and pain, lead to your God, to our own and provide in every chance. join together in prayer, we're going to say the same prayer to the screen. Let us pray. Dear God, our Lord, we remember today the pain and suffering of the cross and all that Jesus was willing to endure. We could be set free. We pay the price, such a great sacrifice, to offer us the gifts of eternal life. And help us never to take for granted this huge gift of love on our behalf. Help us to be reminded of the cost of it in every aspect of our life. Forgive us for being too busy, distracted by other things, for not fully recognizing what you freely given, what you have done for us. Thank you, Lord that by your wounds we are healed. Thank you that because of your huge sacrifice, we can live free. Thank you that sin and death have been conquered and that your power is everlasting. Thank you that we can say with great hope, it is finished. For we know what's still to come and death has lost its sting. And we praise you, for you are making all things anew for us and for the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Two readings. The reading, firstly, from the Old Testament, from the book of Psalms, and it's broken into two sections, verses 1 to 8 and then verses 25 to 30. 
My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I have cried desperately for help, but still it does not come. During the day I call to you, my God, but you do not answer. I call at night, but get no rest. But you are enthroned as the Holy One, the one whom Israel praises. Our ancestors put their trust in you. They trusted you and you saved them. They called to you and escaped from danger. They trusted you and were not disappointed. But I am no longer a human being. I am a worm despised and scorned by everyone. All who see me make fun of me. They stick out their tongues and shake their heads. You relied on the Lord, they say. Why doesn't he save you? If the Lord likes you, why doesn't he help you? Then from verse 25. In the full assembly I will praise you for what you have done. In the presence of those who worship you, I will offer the sacrifices I promised. The poor will eat as much as they want, and those who come to the Lord will praise him. May they prosper forever. All nations will remember the Lord. From every part of the world they will return to him. All races will worship him. The Lord is king and he rules the nations. All proud people will bow down to him. Mortals will bow down before him. Future generations will serve him. They will speak of the Lord to the coming generation. And then from the New Testament, from the Gospel, according to St. John, from the 20th chapter. Then the disciples went back home. Mary stood crying outside the tomb. While she was still crying, she bent over and looked in the tomb and saw two angels there dressed in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head and the other at the feet. Woman, why are you crying? They asked her. And she answered, They have taken my Lord away, and I do not know where they have put him. Then she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who is it that you are looking for? She thought he was the gardener, so she said to him, If you took him away, sir... Tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're so excited to have an ongoing face-to-face worship from today on, each Sunday, hopefully, prayerfully. Now, it's been a precisely a year since we got into the internet service, the YouTube service, because of COVID-19. And I think it's been a tremendously, tremendous journey for all of us, for all of us. And we're grateful to God for his presence with us, wherever we are. We are also so grateful to everybody, every uh, one of you in Thornley Crest Uniting Church, the all the elders and counselors and leaders, finance property, committee, pastoral carers, and, and digital worship team, weekly news persons, flower arrangements, banner ladies, gardening, men's front yard maintenance, Bible study gatherings, Paramount Mission gifts, and those who took them to the Paramount Mission each month, mission planning group, that have been a gathering every month for the past seven months. Church roasters arrangements, mingles, COVID-19 safety planning group, and COVID cleaning and sanitizing groups every Sunday, and marshals, t- toilet f- facility maintenance, and each and every member of this beautiful congregation for their prayers and faithful contributions and sacrifices for God for the church and for each of us for the past 12 months. Amazing, isn't it? It's amazing. So can you just guess how many groups and committees, gatherings that I just mentioned to you? 
guess, 24 of them that have been running for the past one year with a small group of people. Of course, there are still uh, a few others I haven't mentioned. So otherwise, we'll need a couple of more hours to appreciate everyone involved in the ministry for the past 12 months happening right in here. Because of each and every one of you, thank God that we are here today face to face to reflect on Good Friday as a worship community. And I'm not sure, I'm not really sure whether this coronavirus will ease down and disappear completely sometime or second or third, even more deadly wave will hit us and hit the world once again. I'm not sure, but I'm sure, and you sure too, that 100% that we will continue to be a worship community. No matter what it takes, before God and before the, the world, And that's a blessing to know. In the history of Messianic claims, Jesus was not the first person claiming to be Messiah for Israel. As some of you know, there were many others who claimed to be Messiah with thousands of followers with them in Israel history. To name a few, there was a Messiah named Judas of Galilee, who was the founder of the sect of the, the, the group they called Jealots. Judas of Galilee and his many followers led the Jewish revolt against Rome, but they failed. And also there was a man named Theodas around the similar time of Jesus, who also led a huge revolt against Rome but didn't make it. Then Simon of Perea, who lived before Jesus, he and his followers was led a uh, very systemic revolt against Rome a couple of times, and a great number of Jews joined them and followed him, but they didn't succeed. So uh, think about it for a moment. Every time someone stood up claiming, I am Messiah, I'm here to save you. It must have been on national news in Israel and many people, followers, joined them, but still half in doubt because they have seen them quite a few times before. So in the history of Messianic events in Israel, those self-claiming Messiahs were actually their national heroes, in which so many Jews put their trust and faith and their lives as well, praying and wishing this time their hero or Messiah would restore their independence from Rome and leading power among all other nations. And then if we bring all this into the last days of Jesus Christ's suffering, trials, finally death, then we could easily imagine the level of deep despair and frustrations among many ordinary Jews and Jesus followers. And one thing was crystal clear. Their Messiah, their hero, could not and should not be crushed by the Roman authority in front of many people publicly. At some point, they really believed that Jesus was their national hero. And many of them saw Jesus conduct and perform many wonders and miracles. They really believed this man called Jesus would bring victory and glory to their nation once and for all. However, how did it all end? Jesus, 
whom they once believed as their hero, a Messiah, was crucified ruthlessly and shamefully and publicly in broad daylight. What a shame. Seeing this happen right before their eyes, they must have thought to themselves, what a shame. What an embarrassment. How long do we have to wait for our real one? So they wagged their heads in total despair. They began to leave the place, Golgotha, one by one, heading to their homes, the disciples included. So, the Gospel reading for Good Friday service this morning begins with a sentence which seems to tell all this that I just mentioned to you. Verse 10 reads, Then the disciples went back to their homes. And King James Version puts it this way, Then the disciples went away again to their own homes. It's a very simple description that explains some psychological status at the back of those people who had witnessed the most mysterious and uh, the powerful event of all human history. So what really happened? What did they see that made them decide to go away again to their own homes as if they try so hard to come to their senses. Dis disciples went away again to their own homes. It's like they felt that they should, uh, should never be there in the first place. And it's so depressing sentence after they experienced the event and phenomenon that no human languages could possibly explain. But it's all gone, as there should be, the Messiah is gone. So they turned around, went away again, walking back to their homes. How many of you watched a film called Avatar? Raise your hands. Yeah. It's a great movie. The Avatar was directed by James Cameron and uh, came out in 2009. It's an epic science fiction starring Sam Worthington in one of my favorite Aussie actors. And it was a huge scale, imaginary, computer graphic movie. The budget spent for the production was 237 US million dollars. Can you believe it? <laughs> one for one movie. If converted to Aussie dollars, it's $315 million. So I watched it three times, actually. And they, the second movie was con uh, completed. And it was just waiting for the COVID-19 to ease. It was an extremely engrossing movie. And after the movie shown, there was the Avatar Syndrome, where Avatar blew going around across the world. And as a CNN reporter put it this way, Avatar was the highest growing, a grossing film of all time, but many viewers say it leaves them depressed. This computer graphic movie was a bit too real and beautiful for some fans who have experienced depression and even suicidal thoughts after seeing the film. Interesting. <laughs> I never got into situation. But a bit st stupid, I think, when I thought about it. And it was, the movie was a bit too surreal, and also so real for some people, actually a lot of people. So they had a hard time getting back to their normal reality after watching it. 
I don't know, maybe that's why I had to watch it again and some time later, and then again some time later on. So let's get back to the disciples that just went away again to their own homes after having spent for three years with their teacher. For me, it's a bit depressing and disappointing because they just went back to their home as if nothing had happened, as if nothing had happened, especially during the past three years with their master. You see, they had spent three years with Christ, their Lord, the Son of God, the Messiah, basically eating and sleeping together, visiting many towns and places, helping and healing a lot of troubled and sick people. They even saw with their own eyes with Jesus raising the dead Lazarus back to life. But this time... They could not believe their own eyes as they watched their Lord Jesus being whipped, naked, tortured, ruthlessly, and so vulnerably, and then nailed to the cross, bleeding, and finally bleeding to death, just like that. Their leader was crucified. Their master was gone like all other so-called mosaics who had come and gone just like that before. So they went back to their homes. They didn't get back to their secret place somewhere in an upper room trying to pull themselves together for a plan B or something. They just went back to their homes. That's it. Forgetting everything they've been through with their Lord when he was alive. So they ran away just like that. However, there were some women who were still hanging around the cross to which Jesus was being nailed to. So among them was Mary Magdalene. And she was still standing by Jesus at the cross and crying while everyone was running away from the cross. Mary Magdalene and others were running to the cross. That's why we called it Good Friday. Interesting. It very powerful. It's our human instinct when you say a lot of people trying to run away from the trouble, but some people run away, run close to, toward the, the trouble. To be there, just to be there. Though these women were not even thought worthy in their time to be called disciples, but they stood by Jesus at the cross. You see, there were also others who happened to be at the cross, happened to be at the cross as Jesus, as Jesus breathed his last breath. The most unlikely others you could possibly imagine. It's quite surprisingly interesting to see that the only person at the cross to speak of our Christian messianic faith was a Roman soldier who said publicly, truly, this was the Son of God. After he, have watched, he has watched everything around the time of Jesus' death, he said that this was the Son of God. And I believe these were truly good Friday people, people like you are this morning. You are. Good Friday people. Patchman, you are a good Friday people. Good to see you. Every single Meredith, you too. A good Friday people.
Not the disciples. Not Peter. John, James, who virtually actually spent three long years doing everything with Christ. Not them, but the women. But these handful of women and Rome soldiers who did not run away, but running to the cross, hanging around, staking there. Jesus had to die so that Good Friday people lived. Jesus had to suffer so that Good Friday people get healed. Good Friday people are those who follow Christ even to the embarrassing Golgotha. Good Friday people are those who stand crying with those crying like Mary standing crying outside the tomb. Good Friday people are those who take others' pain as their own and take the suffering as if it's their own. Unfortunately, however, our modern Christianity tends to focus on joy, success, comfort too much without the cross of suffering and pain in their Christian journey. I think that's a problem. Because Christianity didn't stop just like that. So I encourage you, every one of you today on this Good Friday to live your life as truthful Good Friday people. Maybe for the rest of your life. Maybe that is one of the most powerful ways to activate your Christian Easter faith in your ordinary life. So friends in Christ, let us remember always, we can never be Easter people without being first Good Friday people. No. We can never have Easter faith without having first Good Friday faith. So bless to you all again. On this Good Friday, let us pray. Father, thank you for that first Good Friday of suffering and pain and crying for the suffering of others. We thank you for us to be able to become a Good Friday people on this Good Friday. And bless everything that we do today and for the rest of our lives so that a lot of people will be blessed by us. And we say these prayers in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us continue to pray in the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trials and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The story has been told. Now we return to the world and we will live and wait. Not really. The worship continues while we wait and watch. And our worship will close after the stone has been removed. And the flame of hope has been relit. While we wait, while darkness covers the land of faith, remember that no matter how abandoned we may feel, we are not alone. God is not in, will not abandon us. Thanks be to God. Amen.